The 2019-20 Dallas Mavericks have a historic NBA offense. Right now, their offense efficiency is 116.7 points per 100 possessions. That comes in just below the 2016-17 World Beater Warriors that were at 116.8. They're just above the 2018-19 Warriors who are at 116.5. And the only other team that comes close is the 2009-2010 Phoenix Suns, the ones where Nash was basically unstoppable. In this breakdown, we're going to look at how the four factors impact their offense, the impact of Chris Epps Porzingis on their offensive spacing, Luka Doncic and his amazing playmaking, the unstoppable Luka and KP pick and roll, and their ball movement and shooting and how their spacing allows them to create easy scoring opportunities. We're also going to look at some of their flow offensive actions as well as the ball screens that they run in their half-court offense. My name is Coach Gibson Piper. You can follow me on Twitter at Half Court Hoops. If you enjoy this video, please feel free to like and share it. The full version of this clinic breakdown is available for my members on the basketballplaybook.com. The four factors for offense and defensive efficiency are nothing new. They've been around for as long as I can remember in my coaching career. They are effective field goal percentage, turnover percentage, offensive rebound percentage, and your free throw rate. We're going to break all of these down in detail. The Mavericks currently rank number five in effective field goal percentage at 54.5%. Effective field goal percentage measures your field goal percentage inside and outside the three, giving weight to the three-pointer that is worth one more point. They rank third in turnover percentage at 13%, so they turn the ball over only on 13% of their possessions. They are fifth in offensive rebounding percentage at 27.3%, so they rebound back 27% of their misses. And they are seventh in free throw rate, or they go to the free throw line 21% of the time of their possessions. All of those combined add into their 116.5 points per 100 possessions. Now, one of the weird things when I was going through some of these stats was looking at the shooting and the frequency and the accuracy of shooting on cleaningtheglass.com. It tells you the location of where they create a lot of their shots. When, when you think about a five out offense and their spacing, it allows for you know easy drives to the rim, drive and kick opportunities. And the interesting thing is, is Dallas is second to last in the percentage of shots that they get at the rim. They're 29th out of 30 NBA teams. They only get 30% of their shots at the rim. Why that doesn't matter as much is because they're second in the NBA with 68.5% shooting percentage on those. So they're shooting almost 70% around the rim. So when they do get to the rim, they're extremely, extremely efficient. One of the big things that allows their offense to be extremely successful is right now they're ranked second in overall threes. So what that means is 42% of all their shots come from three. And generally speaking, if you can shoot a good high quality percentage from three while shooting a high volume and a high number from three, that's the recipe for success. This year, uh, Dallas is shooting actually extremely well from mid-range. They shoot particularly well from long mid-range, about 43%, and then overall from all mid-range is 42%. So when they do take those mid-range shots, they actually shoot a, a, a solid percentage. Combine that with solid three-point shooting percentage, which is about 36% right now as I'm recording this, and then at the rim, obviously 68.5%, which is just a great number to have. One of the things that allows them to score easily and have cleaner looks at the rim is their offensive spacing. The Dallas Mavericks offensive spacing is essentially five out. And this is an offense or a type of offense that I have a ton of experience with. Uh, I coach at the high school level. I have run a five out offense for the last four years now. Um, being able to teach that and kind of talk about some of the concepts I'm a little familiar with so I can explain more detail if you have any follow-up questions about that. The Mavericks five out spacing is pretty simple. You have five players who are going to be starting off behind the three-point line. Typically speaking, when one player drives, the other four are spaced. Uh, in this scenario, we can see Curry is getting downhill. 
the problem this presents for the defense is the Mavericks are trying to own the paint. They're trying to get a paint touch every single time down. When they get, do get a paint touch, the hardest thing is the defensive rotations off of this. Because generally speaking, bigs are going to help, and then you have to help the helper. Well, when you help off of the Mavericks bigs, they can either shoot or make the extra pass, which causes a lot of problems defensively in rotations. Their natural spacing can also cause confusion in transition. Generally speaking, they don't have a rim run, so a big does not run to the middle of the rim, so you have to defend the perimeter. What this allows is for cutters and early offense to get behind the defense and cut for easy backdoor layups, like in this example against the Bucks. Another example of their five out spacing, we can see the Sixers are matched up on their four shooters with their big dropped off. Porzingis is being guarded by Harris, a small forward, generally speaking, in most situations. They run a little bit of their flow action here, a little pin down for Porzingis. He rejects it, and then it goes right into a spread ball screen, and they randomly get into what this is shake action with Porzingis as the shake or the lift. So in this scenario, Harris is not going to help off of him, and it turns into an easier read for the point guard to get downhill, read the drop coverage, and notice that he's sagging off and hits the floater. When the floor is spaced and you have bigs guarding bigs who can shoot, so in this scenario, Lopez is going to be guarding Powell, who is a solid three-point shooter. Lopez is going to help. As this cutter cuts in here, Powell, he occupies Middleton. So this makes the read super easy. It's an open corner kick for an easy catch-and-shoot three opportunity from the corner, which is a high-value shot in today's NBA. One thing that combined with spacing the Mavericks do exceptionally well is their patience. So here you can see the drive and kick opportunities. Everybody gets a touch and then Curry drives in the middle, beats his man, draws two, and then a cutter on the weak side for a reverse layup finish. Another simple read is coming out of a post up. So we can see the four players are spaced around the three point line. So if any help comes, it's just an easy turn, recognize who helped and then hit them for a layup. The same thing happens in spread pick and roll scenarios. A drive downhill, we have a pick and pop from Porzingis, draw two, find the open cutter for an easy dunk. Now we're going to look at what really allows this offense to get to the next level, and that is Luka Doncic and his playmaking, his scoring, his feel for the game, his court vision, the tricks that he uses, everything that he does at an elite level, and his ability to run an elite offense almost by himself uh, adding Porzingis to the mix makes it almost unfair but his ability to read the defense and always put the defense in a tough scenario is amazing let's start off by looking at some of his ball screen playmaking now this may seem like an easy read but what Luca does here is notice that LeBron is the low tag man and he's helping inside what he does is he jumps in the air and stares down Porzingis like he's going to throw Porzingis the ball on the roll and what he does is he actually fires a pass to the corner as he looks off LeBron for the easy corner three he also throws some ridiculous behind the back passes sometimes for flair and sometimes out of necessity here we see Blake in drop coverage which leaves a small area or a pocket to throw the ball in normally this would be a right-handed pocket pass to the roller but Blake Griffin does a good job getting in position, getting his hand in the way, and Luca recognizes it, and so decides to throw behind the back pass, not because it's a crazy fancy play, but because that's the correct basketball pass in this scenario. Just an amazing feel for the game. Another example of his craftiness is this looks like it's a pretty easy layup and bad defense by Blake Griffin, but what you'll notice here on the replay is Luca selling it with his eyes and a little subtle ball fake that freezes Blake Griffin to allow for an easy layup. One of my favorite areas of his game to see is his transition, his court vision and his feel and transition and his ability to spray passes to open shooters makes this offense really go. Here you can see him kind of scanning, looking around, being patient, drawing two defenders and making an early kick for a three. His ability to notice when the defense is sagging in or his man's beat down the floor and allow the easy scoring opportunities. Then flowing into the half court, his ability to read where the help's coming from just takes their spacing to a whole nother level. 
Uh, it also helps that Porzingis, his ability to drive off the catch. So here in this scenario, you can see him attack a closeout off a pump fake, get downhill, avoid the defense, and make a layup. If the defense wants to trap him, they can go ahead and trap. Luka will give it up, and the Mavericks make really good decisions out of those trap scenarios. Another thing that I really like is when Luka gets downhill, his ability to look off defenders, get it back, and then make extra passes, getting everybody involved. Another thing that really stood out to me is how patient he is, how calm he is in the ball screen. He doesn't rush anything. He knows where you're going to be and then makes you pay. And one of the reasons he makes teams pay is because their bigs will sag off of the Dallas bigs, whether it's Powell, Kleba, Porzingis, and their bigs being able to shoot the ball allows them to have maximum five out spacing and be able to take advantage of the defense. One of the hardest actions to guard that the Mavericks run is the Luka and Porzingis spread pick and roll. Here you can see that the Spurs are going to put two guys on Luka. Aldridge and DeRozan are trying to stop him. That leaves the pick and pop open. Although Porzingis is not as elite as a pick and pop threat as you would think on catch and shoots, it's his gravity that really does a lot of damage. According to Synergy on pick and pops, he is at .932, just below his teammate Dwight Powell at .938. So it's more about him attracting the defense and being able to read the defensive coverage and being open more than it is he, him being a pick and pop threat. In this scenario, he's going to roll hard to the basket. Anthony Davis is stuck on Klebra. Kuzma has to take Porzingis. This allows Luka to get downhill and finish with an easy layup because they're worried about Porzingis on the roll. And when teams do try and stop Luka off the bounce, he does a, such a good job reading the defense. Here we can see we get two on the ball uh, with the Pistons having the shake defender canard here have to make a decision luca does his no look jump pass freezes a defender and porzingis gets an easy dunk teams often will try and switch this action which is uh most of the time luca is going to attack and try to go his to his step back in isolation then they will try and post up porzingis there's obviously that big debate about porzingis posting up and so most of their attacks when a team does switch is to have luca attack the big one-on-one -on -one. And most of the time, it's going to end up with him either getting a step back three or a nice isolation layup. Two key components that make this offense become elite and go to the next level. And generally speaking, most offenses are going to be extremely elite when you have six shooters who are over 38% from three. Uh, and when your two worst shooters are Chris Stapps Porzingis and Luka Doncic, who are both shooting about 34% from three on the year right now, you're going to have an elite offense. But what really makes this offense work and it, it makes the defense pay for mistakes is their, uh, their unselfishness and their ball movement. We've talked a little bit about it before, but their ability to make the extra pass to find an open shooter and then also probe for the best shot available. It doesn't always happen. Uh, you know, sometimes we, you see them trying to exploit mismatches, but what I've been really been impressed with so far this year is how they look to attack early and often and just continuously put pressure on the defense no matter what scenario they're in. They're always looking to make the extra pass. They make simple plays. The five out spacing allows them to make those simple plays and those simple reads. And they don't run a ton of a variety of plays, but they run those plays very efficiently and they run them very, very effectively no matter who's in the game. But when you can put, you know, up to four or five really threats on the floor from three at all time, it puts the defense in a predicament and it puts them in tough situations and so that's what i've really been impressed with is is their unselfishness combined with that shooting prowess it really makes for beautiful basketball now we're going to get into their ball screens and the types of ball screens that they run in their offense uh, number one is spread ball screen spread pick and roll this is the most common play pretty much in the nba and college basketball you have a big setting a screen for the point guard Three players are spaced outside the three-point line. Just spread, pick, and roll. Usually, it's a hard roll to the basket. I'm not going to break down exactly how a spread, pick, and roll is broken down. If you want to see that, I left the uh, ball screen clinic video I did in, in the uh, description below with all the other links so you can see exactly how the ball screen is run. But it's, it's pretty simple. When you have shooting, when you have spacing, it's easy to run just a spread, pick, and roll. And uh, just revert back to that, especially in their kind of flow and their uh, basic offense. 
JJ Barea off the bench also does a really good job running that. Um, their bench unit has shooting as well, so it makes it easy. And if you have a point guard who can run the ball screen, it makes the reads a little bit easier and uh, allows for easier scoring opportunities. And it's definitely one of the number one uh, actions that they'll run in their basic offense. And uh, it's essentially just five out with a uh, hard roll to the basket. The next ball screen we're going to look at is just a side ball screen. I term a side ball screen when one side of the floor is empty. You have a big setting a ball screen uh, away from the basket, essentially. And then you have the other three players are on the opposite side of the floor. This allows for some pretty good spacing in a two-man game. Uh, the Mavericks do a really good job attacking teams uh, who are going to defend this. So here you can see Luka in transition, going to attack off this side ball screen. The whole side of this left floor is open. Uh, in this clip specifically, you can see the player, I think that's Finney Smith, running underneath. He's going to turn this into a, almost like a spread ball screen roll. But this is initially a side ball screen. I just want to show that spacing on that. Uh, a common way that teams will defend this is uh, with ice or blue or down coverage. Uh, here we can see Boban setting that side pick and roll. The two players from the Nets are going to be in ice coverage. The point guard, or the guard in this case, Harris, is forcing the ball to the baseline. The big is zoned up. Jordan is zoned up and not allowing an easy drive. The way they attack this is to drive baseline and try to hit that little pocket pass and that little pocket roll uh, into that space. If the help side defense is not there in time, the roller is open. And since the Mavericks have good shooting and spacing on that side of the floor, generally speaking, the roll is open. If the ball screen is set with a shooting, for instance, Porzingis or Kleba in this scenario, you'll see them combat that with big above coverage where the big stays above as the point guard drives to the baseline. That usually allows for a open pick and pop three. They'll design certain plays to attack teams. They know they're going to ice a side ball screen to have a good shooter set the screen and have a pick and pop for an easy open catch and shoot three. A variation of side ball screens are step up ball screens, uh, ball screens that are typically set in transition for the Mavericks where the big will change the angle and have his chest towards half court. Uh, usually this allows the guard to get downhill and attack the big one on one, uh, turn the corner and try and either score layups or uh, get quick attacks off of it. One of the things that they'll do is in their half court offense, they'll have this in certain sets that they like to flow into. Um, to try and get like Luka downhill or, or guard attacking downhill. And then also in transition, just set these random kind of step up screens. And by doing this, it forces the big to react and doesn't allow them to get their defensive coverage set up. One of my favorite ball screens, the Spain ball screen, as I call it. Uh, NBA teams call it stack. As you can see, Luka calling stack here. This is essentially a ball screen with a guard setting a back screen on the ball screener's defender. Um, typically it is going to be in the middle of the floor and it is designed to create confusion. This is uh, something that I initially saw the Spanish national team run, so that's why I call it Spain. But here you can see the ball screen from Powell, the back screen from Hardaway Jr. And LaMarcus Aldridge, what he's trying to do is get underneath that back screen and not get screened. And this actually disengages his vision from the ball screen, so it puts him out of position. And it just causes a lot of confusion, frankly. And NBA teams really haven't figured out how to defend it yet. Here you can see they're going to try and, and switch it, um, end up having the player guard take the big, and the big ends up popping here, a nice read. Here we see the Pistons know the call is coming. They call out stack. Uh, they know the play is coming. So what the Mavericks do a really good job of is playing in their flow. And Seth Curry notices this, and he's going to see Drummond notices him here. He's looking for that back screen to get around it. So what he does is he lifts out to the wing and creates this in a spread pick and roll situation and allows Luka to get downhill. And uh, for it's an easier read for the uh, Mavericks in the ball screen. And then obviously Porzingis uh, detonates there. But again, if, uh, if Brooklyn here is going to drop, so you can see Jordan's going to get underneath that. And then Luka's downhill. He's able to avoid and finish with a nice uh, layup. And then here, we're going to see a good example of good patience. So on that drop there, he kind of fakes the roller, and then the pop is wide open. Just a really hard play to guard. Another type of ball screen that they will use is guard-to-guard -guard ball screen for certain matchups and uh, different scenarios. So basically just 
kind of pick your poison do you want to guard luka do you want to guard the pick and pop and what they'll do is they'll try and find like a weak defender such as jj reddick in this scenario um you know in different scenarios they'll, they'll try to pick on different different people um end of games they'll try and do this too to get luka matched up on the uh, defender that they want and just a simple guard to guard ball screen so they'll pick out who they want to set the ball screen and then just go set it um and then they also have a variation of that which is the next ball screen we look at which is what i just call ghost ball screens I call these ghost ball screens just because it, you make it seem like you're going to go instead of ball screen, you fake it and slip into space and you make it seem like the ball screen was going to be there when it's actually not. Um, they will go to this action at the end of quarters and typically at the end of games uh, to either get a guard downhill or just kind of create some confusion. Uh, it's been a pretty effective play for them, especially in the end of game scenarios to either get a guard downhill um, or, you know, be able to get a pick and pop scenario or just kind of create the matchup that they want in the uh, scenario that they want. A part of their flow offense is what I call Miami action, which is uh, usually a handoff into a ball screen. They'll run this action, either a handoff into a pick and roll, or they'll also run it from a handoff, um, kind of hit the big who would be chasing into a pick and roll almost at the elbow, uh, and then play like a little two-man game off of him with screening and cutting and, and a handoff and ball screens and different things like that. They will typically go to this action if like Luca or Porzingis, who's been injured lately, will uh, be out of the game and just allow them to play this little kind of side two-man game. Another part of their flow offense is uh, called wide action. I actually saw this uh, come from the Milwaukee Bucks and Budenholzer system over the last few years where the ball gets reversed and then the uh, big or player in the middle will go and set this like kind of quick wide screen in the middle of the floor. Allows for different reads, uh, you know, backdoor curl. The Mavericks don't run this action a ton. Um, they kind of run this either in like blowouts or if the offense is kind of stalling, they may go to this action every now and then, but not as common as the other ones, but they definitely do go to it. And it's been pretty effective for the uh, Bucks over the last few years. You know, Bucks have had one of the better offenses in the uh, NBA. And so they like to run this action for, uh, you know, Giannis and Middleton and, and players like that. And just allows the uh, game to flow a little bit better if, uh, if the, you know, offense is getting stagnant. It allows the, uh, the players to kind of make easier reads and maybe get a quick bucket out of it. Thank you so much for watching this breakdown on the Mavericks five out offense. If you are interested in that clinic, it is available for purchase on my website, thebasketballplaybook.com, and from my members. Uh, feel free to check it out there and uh, follow me on Twitter at Half Court Hoops. Any feedback would be awesome. Look forward to doing more of these. Have a great day.